Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to go over a little bit continuing from the last one. In the last video, we talked about object-oriented programming and the use of methods. Well, as a review, we can say, let's just say var a equals um, 33. And then we said print, actually, uh, a, um, let's see, print, excuse me, a dot length, length, and it will give us the length of this variable. Unfortunately, I did this wrong. We'll turn it into a string, and then a dot length, and it'll give us the length, which is two characters. And so what we discussed was the variable dot the method, and the method always acts upon the variable onto the left. There are some other things which we can actually do, and that's what the method. The next will be a function. Function and a method are basically the same thing. It's methods are used when we talked more about object orientation. So in other words, variable dot method. Functions generally um, organize by function, open parentheses, close parentheses. Inside of there is the argument if you remember that from previous talks. So that's how an, um, a function is actually listed as. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure what the difference is. I really can't figure that one out. I'm sure there is some history of that itself, but why is there a difference? Um, I, I think it's probably because it's easier to read this way or something like that, you know, um, and that's it's carried through from previous experience and they don't want to make big changes because you could easily do um, a dot length dot print I mean that certainly would make a lot of sense but at the same time that's just not the way it goes it's kind of like you know how we spell knife with a K right I mean what what does that make sense right but but that's just the way it is so what can we actually do well I wanted to go over a few things if you remember I talked about um, uh, strong typing which when you have a string this value will always be a string unless I actually do something about it. Well, how do you do something about it? We did a few things before. Let's say variable b equals, let's just actually do it this way. Int b equals 555. How do you change that into a string? Well, it would be string c equals b dot to string right there it changes it into a string and print c let's see what that gives us it gives us 555 but however this is actually a string it's not a um, integer how do we know that there is a way to find this out you can do it a number of ways you could just go ahead and add it, say C plus 4, it gives us an error. Uh, int says you can't add an integer and a string. Okay, so this actually is a string then, we know that. So Dart is actually helping us a little bit. The other way is using assert. Assert is basically saying, um, tell me if this is true or false. So it's Boolean, right? So it's a bool. It says, is this true or is this false? So I think C is string. So I'm telling the computer, tell me, I think C is a string. First of all, I know it's a string because there's no error here, right? If there was an error here, let's just say there's going to be an error here, right? So it's a, it's a type problem. Um, so in other words, string C equals 33, that should be int or num. It's not, but let's just say, for example, I couldn't really figure it out that easily. It's not helping me. Assert C is string. So C is t of type string. And it runs the program. What if you said, I think it's of type int. So I think it's an integer. It'll give you type uh, assertion error. So basically, assert C is int, that is wrong, that's false. Therefore, it gives you an error. Again, you could put other things. Bool. Is C a bool in the type of bool? No. Um, if you put C equals true, this would be true. So it would go on. Uh-oh. 
Whoops, I said string C. I gotta say bool. There's no longer any error. Um, so notice that if there's no error, if this is true, everything is going to work perfectly fine. If this is false, then this is basically going to stop you right here. This is basically in the uh, development mode. There is a way in which you can go here and change this so none of these assertions work at all. It doesn't stop the program itself. But but when we're learning, this is a way which we could tell how what happens with what. Okay. Um, so let's let's back up here again. So so string c equals um, b dot to string. So it changes that from a integer into a string. Now what if we have okay um, string? Actually, we have that up here. String a equals thirty three. How do you change that? This is getting a little messy. How, how do we change string A into 33, the number, not just the text? So I'm going to say um, I'm, I want to change it to an integer. Integer D equals um, A dot. Actually, it doesn't work that way. Int dot parse A. And that'll actually convert it into no error. Assertion is a bool. Sorry. Uh, I'm just going to comment this stuff out. Okay. Um, Int.parse A. So D is equal to the number 33. How do I find that out? Assert D um, is int. I don't get any errors. No errors. That is true. So D actually is the integer of 33. What's the value of D? D equals 33. Again, no quotation marks, so it's actually uh, an integer. And there's no errors there as well. So this is actually correct. So again, this is a function. Um, I'm not sure exactly the syntax of why this is. This is something you just kind of remember. And there are going to be a little bit of funny things here and there. Again, there might be some historical reason why it's like this. Because when you look at this int dot, there really is no other function here or method here right it's just just parse so why didn't they just make it int parse uh, i don't know um that's the way it was so int dot parse argument inside of the quotation marks just like print remember print is a function so print quotation marks function and there is the number right inside of here and so that'll actually print this method itself so in the function this the function acts upon the argument in object oriented program the method acts upon the object itself so just things to keep in mind and what the difference is between these two okay so that was one thing i wanted to just do a couple of cleanup things of where i actually what i actually left off so in times past in previous talks we talked about we can print Okay, so I'm just going to comment this out. So again, multi-line comment dot this dot um, asterisk asterisk forward slash. So that comments that whole area out. Um, print 333. What's going to happen? It's just going to print 333. I can add integers to, so it would be 335 within just like that. That's not a problem. What if they were strings? Uh, to put two strings together, let's just say string a equal a equals hello and string b equals world. All right. How do I put those two together? There are two main ways to put them together. You could You can do one of two ways. Number one, you could basically just add the two together itself. So A plus B. And then I'm going to say print C. And let's see what that actually looks like. Hello world. How do you make, there's a space in between or a comma or something like that. You have to manipulate it like this. Hello space world exclamation point. You can do that. So the process of putting two strings together is called concatenate.
So when you concatenate two, um, two strings, it's when you put together two or more pieces of string, two strings or texts, and combine them together. Um, that word always bothers me, concatenate. That's concate, concatenate. There is no such word as concate, believe it or not, but this is concate. That, that bothers me anyway. Okay, so if you do it this way, it becomes hello world. What's the other way? The other way you do it is, do you remember when we did string interpolation? So, quote, pound, I'm, I'm sorry, dollar side, dollar side, a, comma, space, dollar, b, exclamation point. So every time there is a dollar sign, there, it's going to substitute hello inside of there. So it should be hello, comma, space, world, exclamation point. And it shows the exact same thing. So that's how you can concatenate the words together. Um, or you could just print, take away everything, and it'll be just Merge together, just mush together like that also. So you can do it one of two ways. Con when you use the plus sign for numbers, you'll simply add the numbers together. And you can add an integer to a double easily, so it'll just give you a double. Or you can add strings together, and that is called concatenation. Um, and you'll concatenate, put together these two strings. So I hope this clears up. A few things it, it we talk about concatenation um, methods and functions there is a little bit of difference um, not if you can use them interchangeably so it's not a real big deal um, functions they become more apparent there's a little bit of difference again not it's more of just semantics it's just word choices if you said method function everybody would understand what you're talking about so if we in the future we will create our own functions and classes which use methods and um, then we can kind of understand a little bit more about how to use these when we start writing them by ourselves okay I hope that was helpful thank you very much